Hello YouTube and welcome to the 3D printing primary school, otherwise known as the 3PPs. So, today we talk about the slipping of your bottom tube from your extruder. So I have my, this is an example, uh, let's see if I can put this one off, really quick, there we go. So as an example, I had my bottom tube installed uh, properly, so that means that <coughs> I will have my fitting. <coughs> There we go. I would have the tubing installed. I'm just going to put it all the way. I'm not going to put it all the way. Just this demonstration, so all the way in, teeth engaged. Then you will install all these clips. There you go. To keep the pretension. What happens when you're printing? Your filament also retracts, so it moves this way instead of forward, um, which will cause a constant up, like push-pull cycle, and eventually the teeth on this will wear out the plastic because it's metal and this is plastic. And it will just rip out your um, tubing, your shoulder pressure basically. And then you will have to get on your floor or from the filament just being all around. And if you're unlucky, you could you can't rewind it because your filament broke or got melted on your on your heated bed or your or your nozzle. So to fix that, you will install a flange. Uh, let's get an example. This is one that has been installed for about. Let's see. There we go. This one has been installed for about six months. As you can see, the flange is quite flat. It didn't start out this way. But I will tell you how to make this. Um, and this will basically, before this can exit this way, decoupling it basically, you will need a lot of force. So this will basically not fail at all. Um, so originally, when you first make it, it will look something like this. So not as flat, but just like a cone shape. But eventually when your filament retracts and goes this way, um, just the, the friction of the filament will push this flange against the um, extruder body and flatten it out like this. So it doesn't start out as flat, so no worries. It starts out more of a cone or funnel shape like this. So you will need a few things. First of all, you will need a very specific coupler. Uh, there are two versions of the larger diameter coupler. They should work with the small couplers as well, by the way. You just have to drill out the uh, diameter of the um, uh, of your tubing. So it, so your coupler goes all the way through. Or like, sorry, so that the tubing goes all the way through your coupler. You will not rely on the force of this anymore, basically. Um, but drilling out... Uh, like this size for your coupler should not damage the um, uh, the fitting itself. Um, when you let's see, when you, like for these, for example, these are the, the smaller diameter ones. As long as you push down on this, so it's not engaging the teeth, and you drill through, it should not damage the teeth, so they should still function as intended. So there are two versions of the uh, let's see of the uh, the coupler. If I can get my hands on the bad one, I think I chucked it over here. There we go. So there's two versions. There is the flush one over here. There we go. And you have the um, indented one in the sense. So there's like a this flush here, and then inside there's another diameter which is flush with the tubing. You will need these, the the flush ones, like all in all, like just a straight hole in a sense. You could also just use a bolt, to be honest, that you just drill the hole through. But what you want, I'm just going to show it again, is one of the fittings that is flush with your tubing. There you go, like this. You will need a clip. And you will need some, in my case, let's get a few of these uh, M3 washers. These are like super thin, so I needed a few to stack them up. So, there we go. I think I needed like four to stack up. Uh, but in essence, it could vary from your own extruder. So, just be sure the washer can easily fit around the filament, but does not touch the wall on the inside of your extruder. So, you can just bottom out the uh, washer to the extruder body if you would put it over. So, put it over. and. Test it by eye, do not put it in because it can get stuck in there and it's really annoying to get out. So if you think it fits all the way, just bottom it out in the back. And I had to stack four of the washers because mine are like super thin. So that's 
So once those are in, that's that for that side. Uh, what you will do, or what you will also need is a uh, little hand drill. You could use a, a regular screwdriver, but the hand drill is just way easier. And you will need a little posset drive like this, quite chunky one, just comparison to the wooden tube for instance. Um, you need quite a chunky one, so I'll give you a headphone warning when I use them. So what you will do is you will put on the clip, let's see, like so. Once you've exposed about 5 millimeters or one fifth of an inch of tubing. And what you will do, I will not start yet, you will basically mate these two surfaces. You will spin your drill until it he kind of heats up the tip there. And then you will ream it out into the funnel shape that I just showed you before. So headphone warning, I'm going to do it right now. Again, headphone warning. So you first gonna heat it up. And once you heat it up quite a bit, you will start to oh let's do it again, heat it up a bit. You will start to push it in to get it funnel shape. Watch out for your fingers. Push it in and then ream it. Like moving your drill up and down with a lot of pressure. And there you go. Okay, and then it should look something like this. Keep going until the edges of this uh, are basically headphone one again are basically almost flush with the uh, the thread. So let's continue. Okay. As you can see here, it's now cone shaped like, like this. What you will then do is you will get this. Always uh, connect this side first and then connect the bottom tube from your, ex, uh, your hot end. Because this will not be able to move anymore. So your, your, couple, your, your tube will stay like this. If your hot end is first installed, for instance, like like as a test like this, this will try to turn this way, and it will rip out eventually your your tube out of your hot end. So just be sure you always connect this side first. So we note the washers are inside and they're bottom out. I have four installed. I'll put this in, and I will. Okay, and I will uh, let's see where's my little wrench. I just had it, this, there we go, I'm going to wrench, and I will wrench this on secure. As you can see, the tube is moving with it. That's why you don't want this to be installed while your hot end is connected. It's a bit tricky. Just keep turning. If you feel a bit of pressure, just keep going, don't be scared. Okay. <clears throat> Come on. And there we go. You should, you should be able to bottom out the screw all the way, even with the four watts inside. Okay. And what you will then do is then you will just connect your this side to your hot end. Uh, sorry, you should cut this one off, or else it might give the bad expression or impression. This should just be a normal flat one and just goes inside of your hot end uh, bottom tube. And then you use the clip again. So basically, that's it. And over, like it starts out again as a. Um, let's see, where is that Well, as you saw before, it starts out as like a, sh of, like a dish-shaped flange, like a funnel shape. But eventually, when your printer goes in and out, in and out, it will turn into a flat flange like this. And you can test this by just removing it after a while when you're printing. And if it's flat, it's done its job. If it stays conical, that means that your teeth are still gripping enough for it not to move but the moment it's like this that means that your uh what's it called your, your flange has saved you from a ripped out tube because it takes over the force that is usually missed by the uh the teeth of the coupler so i will just remove it right now just without using it basically to see or to show you that it didn't crush it yet
There you go. As you can see, it pushed in a little bit, but not by much. But eventually, it will get pushed against the body here and then flatten out by itself. So again, you just screw it on, and then you screw on your, or then you put on uh, the the tubing into your hot end, and then eventually it should look like this. And then you're all fine and set up. And then you can basically do it as much as you want. Doesn't matter if you use the cheap tubing or the expensive tubing. As long as you're using the coupler with the flat uh, end here, it should, in the end, look like this. So I'll just put mine back on for demonstration purposes. Oh, so this is the one with the flat brim. And I still have my four washers installed. You can see it's a really tight grip as well from the just from the force itself. Okay, there you go. And then I will snug you up. One, two, three, and four. The more washes you have in there, by the way, um, the more pressure it will put onto the, the lip. And if you have enough washes in there, you probably are able to crush the uh like this shape into the flat one like just by turning it but honestly speaking i don't feel the need to do that and adding more washers than this i don't really feel comfortable about but you know you can test it out if you want and then this is all the way secured and then i will put this in my hot end side there you go and then snug you up I have a hot and fix installed by the way, that's why I don't have to bottom out my uh, my PTFE tube with the nozzle, but it goes a bit above onto a washer that's inside there. So I only go in like this far instead of like this far. So tube back in there, and then you put in the clip, and then you're all set. And now everything should work fine. Uh, note that just start printing with your with your uh, start printing i guess and see if this is moving at all it can move maybe like half a millimeter but it shouldn't move any more than that and eventually you should just stop moving because of that flange it should not be able to uh like get released and this should grip more uh, firmly then but as you can see i can toggle it <sighs> oh gee okay i will probably break something before yeah so so you can see I cannot uh, move this out because of that flange um, whilst with let's say the even though it's the more crappy one if you can find it there you go even if it's the more crappy one um, and I had a clip on it like so a clip on it yeah you can still pull it out easily so that's the difference between this and the flange on the back, like, I can't move it out. There you go. Um, just as a caveat, there's only one little issue. You might have a little bit of issue with loading uh, filament. Because um, you usually would remove this Bowden tube on this side in order to push a filament through. Luckily, my holes are aligned, so I can just... Like, like I can just remove the uh, hot end side and then push it through and I don't have an issue so I never have to remove this side but just keep in mind if you are running into issues you will have to remove your bottom tube from your um, hot end and then unscrew this entire um, coupler instead of just removing this uh, cable because honestly this is not coming off at all because of the flange so just keep that in mind it's an extra step that you might have to take but for my setup Maybe I got lucky, uh, I don't have to do that at all. So, I'll just, for instance, uh, remove this clip here. Let's see if I can... There we go. Okay, stop moving that way. There we go. So, I have my bottom tube, and I can just honestly just feed the filament through it without actually you know what it was sticking out a bit let me show let me pull out the filament entirely there you go 
Okay, like this actually. Let me rewind it. There you go. So basically, now my filament is, as you can see, and if I can stop it from unspooling it like this, there you go. As you can see, my filament is now all the way out of the extruder. So um, I will show you that I don't need to unhook this, and then just unhooking this side is fine. So I'll put you back in here. If you can stop on winding again, I really hate this one. Okay, so I go in there, push that in. There we go. It's in, so because it's aligned properly, like the, the gearing and stuff. Push, push, push. There we go. As you can see, came out here. I didn't have to unplug this. Sometimes though, when filament like the flexible ones are a bit iffy then you will have to do it but it's not that much of a deal to be honest you really just need this thing and then just remember that you have to unplug it here and then unwind this so in essence again um, your little flange that looks like this will turn into this in the end like uh, the, the, the flat one so I can just cut this off bit of an angle put this back in and then put in the clip to secure it and then everything is set up the way it's supposed to I have my filament guide over here boop 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 and then the clip of that here and I am basically ready to go so um, tell me if you think this uh, fix helped you at all if you had issues with ex uh, your, your, your tubes slipping out and um, if you have any requests put it in the description uh, I know it's a bit of a um, hectic video, but I hope that I've explained it properly why you install it. A link will be in the description for the hotend fix, by the way, that was mentioned before. Um, again, I know it's kind of sporadic, uh, like what you need, how to do it, etc. But I'm doing this unscripted, and I'm hoping it helps someone out. So, um, sorry for wasting your 17 minutes and 22 seconds, and yeah. All the best of luck to those that have the issue that I have and they should never come off basically ever again. Good luck and have fun printing.